Speaker Abbas unveils new program to strengthen parliamentary practice, seeks partner support. Strengthening the legislature is not only imperative, but also an investment in the stability and progress of our democracy. Nigeria targets oil expansion. New regulations aim to add 1 million barrels daily, says Upstream Commission. What new investments do we need to make? So that first of all, we can go back to 2.4 million barrels that Nigeria achieved during COVID. Bob Risky intercepted by Nigeria Immigration Service amid ongoing investigations. And on Good Morning Nigeria today, we shall review the new basic education curriculum. So, let's face it. Nigeria's education sector has faced its fair share of challenges. I mean, outdated curricula, crumbling infrastructure, and learning outcomes that don't quite measure up. But there's a new chapter opening Absolutely, Victor, and it's a chapter filled with promise. The federal government is turning the page with a brand new basic education curriculum. That's right. Um, this new curriculum is a product of the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council, working closely with educators, policymakers, and even industry experts. They've pulled out all the stops on this one. And... Uh... What is this curriculum about now? Yes, what uh, they have packed into it. Uh, focus on 21st century skills like critical thinking, problem solving, communication, and teamwork. A serious push for STEM education. Yes, talking about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And of course, digital literacy. Yes, uh, kids are even learning to code. By the way, Victor, did you... <laughs> Did you try that it, when in school? It didn't exist in my time. <laughs> well, th that's just the beginning, indeed. Uh, there's more. Entrepreneurship and vocational skills are in the mix. Preparing students for the real world. A renewed focus on Nigerian history, culture, and values. And, of course, a learner curriculum structure. Fewer subjects, more focus. It's all about competency. Students will need to show what they can do, not just what they know. Mm, of course, uh, gone are the days of uh, learning just A, B, C, D, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, moving on to adding two plus one. Now you understand, you know, much more beyond that. So, what's the goal here? It's simple: better learning outcomes, preparing students not just for jobs but for creating jobs, cultivating creativity, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills. Uh, we all keep talking about and of course i must mention boosting digital literacy and driving tech innovation and let's not forget building a stronger sense of unity and cultural pride it's an ambitious plan come to think of it no doubt and uh, it spans the whole range of basic education primary education junior secondary that's uh, year one to three and right up to senior secondary uh, ss one to three how will this reform impact the quality of education? What are the wins and where might we stumble? Our expert panel is ready with answers and insights. I am Victor Azwanda. You are right where you need to be. Welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. And I'm Yen Ray John. It's a fantastic topic. I'm sure you don't want to miss uh, a bit of it. So thank you for joining us so early. We expect you to stay tuned till 9 a.m. when mm -hmm. we will be done with Good Morning Nigeria today. Uh, we're reaching you live on the network service of the NTA. In the course of the program, Chukudi Okuli Baja will join us for the news paper review. But uh, let's pause. Let uh, the newscaster lead us uh, on this program this morning. Sawa. Khalil Ibrahim is our guide. Sawa, good morning to you. Good morning, Henry and uh, Victor. By the way, did you learn how to code in school? Or no, you were certainly no, not at that time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good morning. Here is the news at 7. 
A strong legislature is crucial in driving national reforms and ensuring accountability in democratic governance. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, said that this while representing the Parliamentary Development Program of the House, of House to Development and Technical Partners in Abuja. Strengthening the legislature is not only imperative, but also an investment in the stability and progress of our democracy. The parliamentary development program matters not only for Nigeria's development imperatives, but for, Africa, for the African region. As the largest democracy in Africa, if Nigeria succeeds, Africa succeeds and the world progresses. The federal government is determined to leverage Nigeria's oil and gas to diversify the country's economic growth. President Bola Tinubu says this necessitated reforms on assumption to office to reposition the sector for sustainability and combativeness. The secretary to the government of the federation, Senator George Akume, is applauding the actionable commitment for an additional one million barrels per day by key players in oil and gas. What new investments do we need to make? So that first of all, we can go back to 2.4 million barrels that Nigeria achieved during COVID. The federal government has formally flagged off the reconstruction radar of some of Abuja Kaduna Highway utilizing concrete technology. The Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, performed the flag off, reiterated a federal government commitment to bring SACA to travelers along that corridor. <laughs> Now, the Nigerian Immigration Service says it has intercepted Akune Idris Olari Waju, otherwise known as Babriski, at the Seme border while attempting to exit the country. In a statement, the public relations officer of the Nanjan Immigration Service, Kenneth Udo, explains that Akuneye Idris is a person of interest over recent issues of public concern and is undergoing interrogation ahead of being handed over to the appropriate authorities for further action. The service assures the public that it will continue to be civil and professional in keeping with its commitment to statutory responsibility of securing the borders. Now, humanity, compassion and care for one another, irrespective of the existential, religious, political and cultural differences, are all that is needed for Nigeria's unity to bear fruition. This has been demonstrated as people from all walks of life troop in to sympathize with Jigar State over the recent petrol tanker explosion that claimed close to 200 lives in the Majia town of Taura local government area. To express our deepest commiseration with you and the entire people of the Gawa State over this side of development. It's a very unbelievable uh, item, especially PMS. Uh, so we will try and do quite a lot of uh, enlightenment so that people will be careful. Those are the highlights of the news at this time. Good morning, Nigeria continues with Nyeri Victor after the commercial break. Please don't go away. <laughs>